Okay, so in this video we are going to have a look at a concept within data representation which is how do we convert a sound or how do we convert an analog sound wave into a digital sound wave. So what we're going to start off by just considering for a moment um, is that our analog sound wave is a nice smooth representation of changes in air pressure and that is what the human ear processes and if we were studying biology we could look at how the eardrum picks up those those changes in air pressure and we've learned over the course of our childhood how to interpret those signals. When it comes to a computer though, a computer doesn't have an eardrum, it doesn't have uh, the ability to process those signals in the same way, so what it does, it has access to convert signals into binary form and, and that's really the about all that it has. So what you can see here is a nice representation of an analog sound wave but then you can see a stepped or blocked uh, way that a digital sound wave is converted um, correspondingly. Now in a digital sound wave this stepping or blocking is referred to as sampling so samples being taken. So the kind of thing you would expect to see with this is a four mark question where you might be asked to explain the steps involved in converting um, an analog to digital sound signal. So what we're going to do um, is I'm going to walk you through the steps and, and, and sort of talk you through the mark points of how this would be approached. Um, for the purpose of this, I'm going to sort of just say that really the digital to analog the other way around is, a, is the opposite of the process. But we'll also talk about some of the issues that are around that um, a little bit later as well. So the first thing to say is that, um, and the first mark point you would ever put on a question like this, is that samples are taken at fixed and regular intervals. So in the case of like a CD, for instance, samples sound at somewhere in the range of 44,100 samples per second. So it's fixed and regular intervals. Now when those, those measurements are taken, what we are taking is a, an approximation or an approximate value. So you can see here that for the intents and purposes, here is part of an analog sound wave, and here are some recorded measurements which we can say are an approximation for where that sample is on the particular part of the scale. So fixed and regular, um, fixed and regular intervals and an approximation of the values is taken. Now, what we must then do with those with those sound values, with those um, representation values, is they are what we call quantized. So they're, re they're rounded to the nearest representable value in our binary number system. And having studied stuff like binary numbers, you will understand that in, in certain situations, you only have a certain or fixed number of binary values or um, memory locations that you can store a binary number in. So for instance, if sound was being um, sampled at a 16-bit uh, rate, then you would have 16 bits per sample to record a particular value of sound. Now, in this particular case here, I'm only using three bits because the largest sample I have is seven, okay, and I'm having to quantize that, so I'm having to approximate it, so I'm losing that 0.2. I'm losing on the three, the 0.5, on the six, the 0.1, and on the five, the 0.3. So in this particular example, we are using a three bit depth for each sample in our sound. So the units of measurements are quantized, they're rounded to the nearest representable value, and then those values are turned into binary codes which are stored on the computer. So using our three bit depth sample here, we can see that three has been converted into its binary form of 0, 1, 1, 6, the corresponding 7, and then the 5. So only the samples that are um, that are approximate are quantized are then recorded into the into the actual um, audio file that we've got. Now, things to kind of understand about this is that if we refer back to this measurement here, and in fact, actually, the previous previous couple of slides is probably a better representation. You can see that this analog sound wave that we've broadcast along here, and then the corresponding digital wave has areas where there are spaces. So we will always suggest, or we can always say, that an, a digital sound sample will never be as accurate as the original recording because we've got areas where we have literally approximated the value. Now, it might be perfectly good for the human ear, but it's not the perfect representation of a sound file. And you can even see on here this representation, this is only an approximation of four samples, when if we had 4,000 samples in here, we'd obviously get a much accurate, more accurate representation but it still wouldn't be perfect in the same sense.
So some things to kind of wrap, wrap up with on this. If we talk about what happens when we change a sound file, well, if we increase sample resolution, okay, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make the, the actual um, the, the sound file larger. So when we talk about sample resolution, I'm talking about the, um, the, the amount, the bits stored per sample. It makes it a closer representation, um, but try avoid saying better quality because it's closer representation is the key thing here. Now, um, if we decrease it, obviously conversely we make the file size smaller. It does make the sound file worse because it's further away from the original representation of the sound. Conversely, if we then think about sample rate, sample rate, if we increase the number of samples per second, we're going to make the file size larger, but we, again, we're going to make it closer to the representation of the original sound. And then if we decrease it, it will make it smaller, but it will make it a worse representation of the sound file. Okay, that's going to cover it for this video. Um, I hope you found that useful.